Long before Rolex was known as a high-end luxury brand, Rolex built their reputation around reliable watches that served a purpose. As commercial airlines made the transition from propellers to jet engines, transatlantic flights became more popular. This ability to travel greater distances in shorter amounts of time created the need for more advanced timepieces. Pan Am enlisted the help of Rolex to develop a practical watch that can natively display both local time and reference time. In 1954, Rolex took a Datejust turnograph, added a fourth hand, a new bezel, and updated the movement to create the first GMT Master. While I don't have the original Bakelite GMT Master reference 6542, I do have two examples of the GMT Master that will make great travel companions. We'll start with the second generation of the GMT Master reference 1675. Rolex's first generation of the watch was almost perfect as the 1675 didn't stray far from the original 6542. The most notable changes were the addition of crown guards, date cyclops, increased diameter of 40 millimeters, and an aluminum bezel. While nothing will patina quite like an acrylic Bakelite bezel with radium filled 24 hour markers, the aluminum bezel isn't prone to cracking and could still produce a beautiful patina of its own. You can see here on this 1969-1675, the blue half of the bezel has faded like a well-worn pair of denim, and the red half of the bezel has dulled to a softer pastel red. Moving on to the dial, we have an all-original matte black dial with tritium-filled loom plots and a date at 3 o'clock. The handset has matching tritium with the fourth hand being a bright red GMT hand that completes one rotation every 24 hours. The beautifully patinaed hands and dial can all be admired through the pristine acrylic crystal. The 40mm Oyster case is finished off with drilled lugs to make for easy strap changes. In addition to the original Oyster bracelet, the watch feels right at home on a NATO strap. Although over 50 years old, the 1675 can keep time just as well as any of its younger siblings. Finally, we have the 16710. This is the last GMT Master before the transition to the modern super case and ceramic bezel. On the 16710, Rolex started by streamlining the case and removing the drilled lugs. A more scratch-resistant sapphire crystal was added, and Luminova-filled white gold-applied indices adorned the now gloss black dial. The most noteworthy upgrade was the upgraded movement that gave the GMT Master a quick-set hour hand which allowed for a third time zone to now be tracked. The movement now also had the official Swiss chronometer certification and oscillated at 4 Hz per second. These upgrades were significant enough that Rolex changed the name to the GMT Master II. While the watch lost some of its vintage charm, it was now more convenient and even more robust. The GMT Master is the complete package. It stands out in the monochrome dominated watch world, but does so with a purpose. The two-tone bezel, while beautiful, exists to indicate daytime and nighttime. This trusted tool has earned its place in aviation history as it helped both pilots and astronauts voyage across the earth and space. Wherever your final destination may be, this is the perfect travel companion for those that prefer an analog tool in the ever-growing digital world. You can find more information about this Rolex GMT Master and the Rolex GMT Master II at Fog City Vintage. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.